I'm going to show you a technique for integrating your quotes that I call quotation sandwich. Um, because every quote needs uh, an introduction and it needs the meat of it, the meat of the quote itself, and then you need to analyze and cite your quote after you use it. So the first thing will be to introduce each quote, and I've been talking about hosting your sources. So this is one of the ways in which you can be a good host and introduce your sources to your reader. These are some good phrases. Uh, they signal that um, a quote is coming according to, in her article, or in the opinion of blank, um, or this author's, you know, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson argues that. Um, those signal that the quote's coming. Um, and then you can use all of these other verbs to talk about um, what the person says. Do they agree? Do they point out? Do they suggest? Do they emphasize? The key is variety. You don't want to use according to in every sentence. And you don't want to use the word argues every time. Um, so this might be something you think about in the revision stage. But keep in mind that you want to introduce each quote. Um, and you ultimately want to try to do so with a nice sentence variety. Here's an example. President Trump argues that revoking California's federal waiver on emissions will help us produce far less expensive cars for the consumer, while at the same time making the cars substantially safer. Okay, so my introductory phrase is, President Trump argues that. Now you can't just let the quote speak for itself. We can't just stop there. So after you've introduced your quote, you need to explain why the quote is important. That might um, be direct. You might say this is important because, but you can also talk about what do you think it means? Um, how does this quote connect to your thesis? Do you disagree or agree with what is being said in the quote? For example, President Trump argues that revoking California's federal waiver on emissions will help us produce far less expensive cars for the consumer while at the same time making the cars substantially safer. Trump's assertion that cars could be less expensive without current emission standards is plausible. However, he doesn't seem to be factoring the long-term environmental costs and their subsequent economic impact. All right, so here uh, the writer is actually disagreeing with Trump's statement and explaining why. So we're getting the quote and then we're getting the writer's analysis. This is how I would say it's a sandwich. Um, the top of the sandwich, you know, you start with is introducing. You got that signal phrase that tells us that the quote is coming. And then the quote itself goes in the middle. And then after the quote, we need some analysis. So it's this three-part sandwich. Here's some punctuation rules you might consider. If there's no citation or page number, then all punctuation belongs inside the quotation marks. When adding page numbers and names, with inline citation or page number, place the period after the quote marks. And a few more citation rules. The first time you use a quote from an article, make sure you use the author's first and last name. Remember, because you're introducing them as a host. After that, you can refer to them by last name. Put the names of articles, essays, poems, uh, essays again, and chapters in quotation marks, such as homeless increases in downtown LA. But you want to italicize longer things like books, movies, magazines, newspapers, etc. And then at the end of your paper, you're going to have a works cited page. And we're going to address this uh, in the coming weeks as kind of a last step for your essay. But for now, it's important that you keep at least a log of all of your work that you're going to use, all of the sources that you're going to be using, 
um, because you're going to need to include this at the end of your essay. All right, so that's your quote sandwich.